Okay, so you've finished building your color duo and you want to make sure that it works exactly as it should. And that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, I'm going to assume you know how to use this software, RoomEQ Wizard, and that you've already hooked it up to your interface and you've hooked up your interface to your Color Duo. Um, and if you haven't done any of that, we have another series of videos called Measuring Your Gear with REW uh, that you should check out first and then come back here because I'm going to start right with Measure to create a new measurement. So I've got my Duo set up. It's uh, Channel 1 in line mode with no colors engaged. So I've reflected that here in the name. I've just called it channel one. I'm noting my signal level plus four dBU. Uh, if you're not clear on how to calibrate REW, um, go ahead and check out that video. And uh, line, no color. So I'm just gonna start this sweep. If you don't have a multimeter to do the calibration test with, or the calibration step, you don't need to worry about it. We're really just looking for ballpark figures here, so if you didn't get to calibrate it, don't sweat it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna check is frequency response. I'm gonna go over to the All SPL tab, zoom out so I can see the whole thing. And uh, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, I should have basically ruler flat response. You can zoom in to check that, but really within fractions of a decibel, you should have a flat frequency response. So uh, if you don't, uh, check your interface first. Make sure that your interface is totally flat. If it's not totally flat, uh, it could be throwing off this measurement. Um, now let's go to distortion. So in the distortion graph, we have at the top here our signal and then at the bottom is harmonic distortion and also noise. So cool feature here is if you mouse over the noise measurements here, they highlight them on the graph. So uh, noise floor should look basically like this. It should be hovering around minus 100 decibels relative to the um, signal. Um, it should go up a little bit with frequency, but never never getting above, you know, minus 80 or so, even at 20 kilohertz. Um, and then our, all of our harmonics, we don't have specific specifications for each harmonic, but what I'm gonna have you do is click, put your uh, pointer here at basically more or less one kilohertz on the x-axis. Don't worry about where you click on the y-axis because wherever you click on the x-axis is which, um, measurements it shows down here. And so at 1K, we should have a THD of around 0.01%. Um, so I've got 0.0075%, so that's looking great. Um, if you're around 0.01%, a little bit above or below, you're looking good. You know, because everyone's interface is different, um, there's going to be a bit of variation here. Um, but as long as you're in that 0.01 range at 1K, I think we can confidently say your, your duo is working as it should. Um, so this is just the line mode for channel one. Go ahead and test channel two now. Um, you can test it in mic mode by putting your XLR into the mic input uh, and then setting the front panel switch to mic instead of line. Put the pad in and the mic gain all the way down, and then you'll have uh, basically unity gain. And so you can run this same exact sweep except testing the mic input. Um, and then if that all checks out, you can confidently use your color duo uh, knowing that it's working exactly as designed. Um, while you're here, if you wanna have some fun, you could start engaging colors and see how they affect the distortion plots and the frequency response plots, but um, you might you might want to get into mixing some audio instead of just playing with graphs. Um, if these measurements aren't coming out in the kind of range I've described, drop us a line at support at DIYrecordingEquipment.com and we'll help you figure it out. So thanks and congratulations on finishing your color duo.